gang. Don, how are you, mate? Thanks, yeah. It's great. <laughs> Freddie's uh, doing it tough in the wheelchair. He's the slacker. I've had to push him up here. Sue, we're flying business class, aren't we, Sue? Yes. We're not down with the plebs. No. <laughs> the peasants. <laughs> FA 18 taking off on some military um, expeditions. There's about six of them going to take off. I won't get all six, it might get boring, but uh, yeah, pretty impressive. Ready, here we are. We're first night. We're at the Darwin RSL for our Din Dins. Sue so and her little tribe decide to stay at the motel because they're knackered. So they're having an early night and having something there. But we've come out, we're going to party on, aren't we, Paul? Party on. We're going to kick on. We're going to party throughout the night. night. We're going to be up dancing on tables and everything. We picked up the Sydney connection. You met them at the airport. There's Mark. How are you, Mark? You good? Good. <clears throat> Did you enjoy your flight today? Oh, yes. Yeah, a bit of a flight, wasn't it? Don, what do you reckon? Oh, Got a bit anxious, but you toughed it out, which was good to see. There's Billy Boy, yep. the lovely Joe, Sue, Chris. Yes. How are you, mate? You good? good? How's Sydney these days, all right? A bit wet. A bit wet? Hello. Lucky you're up here. It's nice and warm here. So this is our first morning in the Territory. All the gang are starting to wake up, get themselves organised. This is our little breakfast nook we're going to be eating in this morning, because we want to be outdoors. It's nice and warm. A couple of the boys are here already. And we're starting to get into our breakfast before everyone else. Lucky us. This is the entry to the um, museum, the Chinese Museum in Darwin. We just had a bit of a wander through. Oh, sorry, that's the temple, sorry. We're gonna go into the museum next, which is just over there where the gang are walking to. Deb giving Mark the drill on uh, the dragon's head here. Lion's head. Talking tour guide, look at it. That's like, that's Unbelievable. Like so I'm standing here reading this little uh, plaque, and it says that when the Chinese came here, within three years, so they came in 1874, within three years they'd moved to a different area. Uh, the population had grown to three and a half thousand. So that was from 187 Chinese, it grew to three and a half thousand. Out of the three and a half thousand, they balance it off with the Europeans, there's only 600. So many, many more Chinese than Europeans. We're in the Royal Flying Doctor Service uh, Museum here. Carolyn, who's up there with you? And we got Mark up there, so he's uh, just checking out to make sure it's all safe. So give us a wave, Mark. You look like uh, you're about to fall down there. <laughs> so this is the plane. Obviously they're taking this out. So they have two types of planes, these ones where they're jet powered and they also have, oh no, this one's a prop, this is the engine, but they actually have uh, jet powered ones because they've found they're a lot quicker. Being quicker means they're a lot safer and they can get to places more effectively and efficiently. So the air aid sign signing that uh, something's going to happen. Sorry, what is it? So it's the bombing of Darwin. So we're doing dinner our fresco style, we're just waiting for our delivery and then we're away. Carol and Rebecca are grabbing bowls and whatnot. It's just too nice out here to go inside and sit in anywhere else, so we're chilling out here. What do you reckon Greg? Did you have a good day today? Yeah. Good to hear. What about you Paul? Yeah. Now Paul, tell me where do you live? Daddy Clan Victoria. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. Number four, so, oh, number four, I don't. Here's Freddie. Uh, we, we are what I say. Yeah, we are my partner Jane. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see her uh, the next Tuesday week. Yeah, I will. Um, a lot better. Yeah. And, uh, um, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and uh, I'm saying to my partner, yeah, I've been partnered with that for 28 years. 28 years? Yeah. That must mean that you're pretty old. No, 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 no,
jumping crocodile cruise. The haze in the air, must be obviously fires around here, which happens uh, this time of the year. All the gang is still asleep. Oh, there's Deb over there, she's awake and up. Getting ready for her day as well. Good day today, it'll be a very good day. Here we are out on the highway, driving towards the windows on the wetlands. Here we are, we've arrived at uh, Windows on the Wetlands. So we're about to head inside now. The gang have walked up these steps, so they're ready to go. Yeah, across there, having a chat to Rebecca, and then we're gonna head on in. We've got a tour going shortly, so hopefully we can jump on that tour and uh, enjoy it. Here's Sam. How you going, Sam? That's what they make, Sam. There's Marky Mark, Dom, Yonda, <laughs> Paul, Greg, and Freddie. Yeah. So Carol's leading the way, leading the charge as they say. Crocodile, not real crocodile. I'm going against the flow just to be a radical. And as we drove in, not that these are the ones, but we had a couple of uh, buffalo there bucking horns on the way in. Yeah, it could, could quite good. Guys like that, that was good. I like that. These are some of our nocturnal birds. We've got a tawny frog mouth. The Bush Stone Curlew, which we actually have at our motel. The Southern Boo, Boo Book, which is an owl. And the Barking Owl. The Barking Owl sounds exactly like a dog bark. So we've come up the top of Windows on the Wetlands and this is our view. That overlooks Adelaide River. So we're gonna go to the Jumping Crocodile Cruise just down to our right. Throw Sam in, get her fed up. Well, get the crocs fed up. Down there, that's not cattle, that's actually water buffalo down there in front of us. Look at that beautiful view out there. This is out the other side of windows on the wetlands. Beautiful greenery everywhere. Oh, there's the back of Fred, bald head. He's looking through the, uh, the um, binocular things, whatever they're called. Sue's asked me what gets put into the ground during the dry. So the answer is what happens is Across, when all the water's around, everything's alive and well and breeding and happy. But when the water goes down, it obviously gets dry. The earth's surface becomes dry. They can't live. So all those tiny animals, like there's fish, there's um, moths, bugs, all those things that keep everything flies. alive during the wet. No, flies are always around, but yes, flies. What they do is they can't survive if there's no food. So basically the eggs and that get put, they lay them in the ground before the water disappears. Here we are at the Adelaide River Queen Jumping Crocodile Cruise. All our little cherubs are ready to go, aren't you gang? We're going to be the first on, lucky us. So then we're going to feed them off to the crocs. Freddie's the entree. Like I said before, I'm just a bit of gristle. So I'm so lean and sturdy, so they're not going to eat me. But you guys, you'll be a great feed for them. Cherubs in front of the big croc. This one's one of the ones that got caught. No, it's not, it's just a concrete one. I just like telling stories. Here on the Adelaide River Queen. Yes, I've done this before, Sue. I'm wild and crazy. I'm living on the edge. Here's our little cherubs here, all the gang, we're all on board, which is good. Some good news for everyone back home. Yes, these windows are solid, so crocs can't just jump in and eat us. So a good safety hint there, so we're not feeding anyone to the crocs today. Maybe Ayana, that's all. What do you reckon, Ayana? You have a darling, you good? Alright, this is a two and a half metre crocodile, we call him Bender. He's got his head a little bit skewed. I don't know what's going on there, but we don't know if he's a boy or a girl yet. Under three metres, you've got to catch him. They put a finger where a crocodile doesn't want the finger to be put. Chops, they say. 
Yeah, we're feeding him uh, pig's heads, little bits of pig's head to uh, sustain them. It's just a little reward for their efforts. So as we were driving back from uh, the Jumping Crocodile Cruise, I saw a sign for this place called the Barra Shack. All the gang have gone in there. William's not going in because uh, it's a bit rugged on the old wheelchair through here. And Freddie's got through with his walker. And uh, you just never know what you find when you're in the bush like this. So we thought, let's go and have a look at this place and just see what there is. They sell um, Northern Territory products, buffalo horns and crocodile products. Here we are, we're heading out to the Chunghua Chinese Temple apparently. There's the van ready to go, we've got our little car just here. Sue's been picked up in her taxi because you can't hire wheelchair accessible cars. In uh, Darwin, shocks done a on her, pain. But we'll get over that, that's no issues for us. Here's Don, Greg, Carol, oh g'day Carol, how are ya? Freddie's got his Aboriginal Titan t-shirt on. Good on you mate, and you got your didgeridoo. Brought that up so we can have a rendition of that later. And we got uh, Big Bad Bill here. How you going, Billy? Good? Good to hear, mate. We're coming out of the uh, Darwin Tourist Facility Royal Flying Doctor Service. This is Stokes Wharf, and we've just had a virtual um, little movie play for eight minutes on how it got bombed and how it got destroyed. So obviously, it looks very different today than what it did back then. We're heading off for some lunch now. All little cherubs are getting thirsty and hungry, so we're going to go and fatten them up and get them ready for the afternoon. Here's Rebecca being the tour guide, reading all the bits and pieces of the Big Bad Bill. Hey, Paul, how you going? Good. You good? How's your holiday going? We're going to go and see jumping crocodiles this afternoon, which will be fun. So you've got plenty of feed for the crocodiles. We've got um, all you guys here. Like I said, I'm just a piece of gristle, so I'm no good for them. And I'm only Yeah, skin and bones. Mark, I reckon you'd be a good feed. Our local spider wrangler, Rebecca. She's found, well, it's a dead huntsman, but it's a huntsman. Oh. <laughs> and he's still yeah, scared. She's, she's trying to put it on me. And he's still scared. <laughs> no, no. Here's one of the water buffalo, just having a bit of a drink in the uh, watering hole. Fred, 
jumping crocodile cruise. We're getting some afternoon tea, aren't we, Don? Good afternoon tea, yeah. And then we'll head back into Darwin. By the time we get there, we'll just have a bit of a rest and then out for dinner. So, Chris, what's your thoughts on it? Is it nice up here? It is. Beautiful, isn't it? The rocks are much better than my place. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Beautiful trees. Last time I was here, these trees were quite low, so I haven't been here for three or four years. Another beautiful morning here in the top end. So we're heading out to the East Point Military Museum this morning. This is overlooking my balcony the motel so we look straight out on the bush it's fantastic great motel this one very good big rooms uh, really neat clean and tidy big beautiful swimming pool and a sunrise like this makes it all worth it yeah, we're at the darwin uh oh, defense of darwin experience it's called now it's not the military museum and mark are you pumped up you're excited to go yes yes look at him he's gonna knock me over if i don't let him in shortly He's going to mug me. We're, we've got some rope in there because we're going to have to tie him down and drag him out, he reckons. <laughs> He's quite excited about this military museum. There's Sue. She's checking in everything out. She's trying to hide from the camera, but nobody can hide from my camera. It's impossible. My camera is everywhere all the time. So the military museum is very impressive now. They've really done it up well. And even better news from a lot of the guys, the coffee machine's being fixed as we speak, so we'll be able to come out and have coffee and cake after. Big bad Bill. How is it, Bill? All right. All right. Look this way, on your right. Look, on your right. Aboriginal culture here. This is a pearl here. Very Peter reading out to Mark Cemetery. about the history. We slept on every part of that boat. This Impacted by World War II and the events that occurred in Darwin during that time. Some spent only a short time in Darwin as part of their military service. Others were locals who lost their lives or their loved ones who were forced to leave their homes. That was Peter. 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 What we're trying to do, we're trying to get a group photo here. It's like herding cats. They are everywhere. And Carol's the um, herder, the cat herder. So we've got the whole gang here today. We've got Sue, Deb, Nicole, everyone here today. So we're at the, uh, the Darwin Museum out at East Point, the military museum. We're about to head out. We've done the inside. We're going to go and wander around the outside, aren't we? Eon, darling, you're looking good today, darling. <laughs> hey, Freddie, how you going? How's that cake? It's beautiful. Good? Oh, yeah. <coughs> Don, how are you feeling today? You good? Yeah, well, I feel better. Oh, you look a million dollars, saying I like that hat. Good hat. There's Chris, the Sydney connection. Yeah. Hey, on, Chris, he's at his Sanger. There's Paul, Mr. Yeah. Coffee and Cake. There's Mark. I've been wandering Mark around, talking lots and lots about the Darwin Museum. Here's Big Bad Billy. How you going, Bill? All right. He's all right. Here's the lovely Sue, Nicole and Deb. The Three Musketeers. And there's Sam. We could never forget Sam. Standing in front of the bins. <laughs> Here's Greg and Sue checking out the peacock. So they do a peacock sound. Sue, go on. Here we go, all the gang sitting around here. They've had a look at the Jeep just here, which is good. Then we're gonna go and, uh, oh, there's another big tank over there. We'll go and have a look at that tank, and then we're gonna go up and have a look at the anti-aircraft guns. Look at all the gang down there. We're, me, Mark, and Chris are up here. We're in the anti-aircraft gun. Well, these guys don't wanna come up. I don't know why. Come on. And then you can just jump down, parachute down. We're wandering through the beautiful canopy here. All the trees are overshadowing everything. It's actually perfect. It's about 32 degrees today, but uh, it's not hot. It actually feels really, really pleasant. That's, that's what I so thought. When it's I, very, when very I pleasant. Came up on Tuesday. So this is our dinner setting tonight. We had crocodile burgers, crocodile sausages, kangaroo steak, all on the barbecue. Fantastic. It's a beautiful balmy night. We're just sitting out here, chewing the fat, having a chat. It's fantastic. It's a great life when you're on holidays. He's our local musician, yeah, Fred. Okay, Peter. What I am now 
Yeah, 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 from my cow stories, you do not call the other Yana Indy. Uh, because the Yana Indy's son is now is here. He, um, and he's not so toy. Yeah, yeah, you do know what I said to you. But you know what I say, the dad is from my cow stories. They call the Yana Indy's son. Yeah, 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 That's Yoffy Yindi. His son is the 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 We're in the uh, centre of Darwin. We're having a wander around. We're doing some shopping. We just had some coffee and cake. And uh, they've got the water features happening there. So it'll be a good day. And then we're on the sunset cruise tonight. We're out on our cruise tonight, aren't we? Yeah, on the darling. <laughs> so we're having an early dinner. It's what time? It's only uh, 4 30 in the afternoon. But uh, early dinner. Yeah, on the cruise. Should be wonderful. It's been a good day today. We've had shopping, spent lots of money. So I put a dent in all their spending money, no doubt. We've got t-shirts and caps and whatever else, so good to go. Paul, what did you get today? New... <laughs> a new cup. New a cap. cup last week. New cap. New cap. New cap and new shirt. Oh, good on you, mate. And I got a new cup the other day. Very good. What did you get? Nothing, you on the darling? Nothing. Nothing, darling. <laughs> You're giggling all the time. Sue, what did you buy? Some souvenirs. What sort of souvenirs did you buy, Sue? Are they wonderfully fun souvenirs? No. <laughs> They're boring. <laughs> what did you get, Don? Toy truck. What'd you get? Toy truck. Oh, that's right. You got the truck, yeah. yeah. Carol, did you buy yourself any souvenirs? I got one thing yet. Oh. <laughs> Freddie, what did you get? I got two um, t-shirts. I think I've got two t-shirts. Now, we're... We've also decided Freddie's on a sugar-free diet because he had two caramel slices and a coffee with three sugars. So that's all low-fat stuff, I'm sure. Chris, what did you get today? What did you buy today? Oh, you got a shirt? So you look sexy when you're up here. What about you, Mark? Belt and a T-shirt. A nice belt and a T-shirt, yes. And Sam, what did you purchase today? A tea towel. A tea towel? Oh, I saw the tea towel. That was very good, actually, yeah. Did you buy anything today? Yeah, two boxes. Two boxes or something? Yeah, one of those. Oh, a little pencil sharpener. Oh, a pencil sharpener, yeah. Oh, excellent. Good to hear. This is our cruising crew tonight. Getting out on our sunset cruise. We're all aboard. Bit of a challenge getting up some of the steps, but we're here. is courtesy of Sue because she been told me I have to take a photo of this guy for the video and the photo so here it is
It is beautiful though, look at that. Yeah. And just off to our left hand side, a nice little boat, they're all lit up. Very picturesque out here tonight. Don, what do you reckon? Should we be just staying here forever? Yeah. Very oh. relaxing, isn't it? Very relaxing, we're going to retire here. Me and Don, we're going to buy a boat and sail away. This guy's in with the croc. He's trying to give him a kiss or something, I don't know. Hey, Look at the leg of this croc. missing a leg. He's got his left uh, leg, but not the front front end. And that's pretty much from getting into fights with other crocodiles. Crocodiles are dangerous animals when they pop the fight. Gang, have a look at the croc in there with the guy dancing around. He wouldn't be dancing around if that croc was out, would he? Oh, you my darling. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, to you. Happy birthday to darling. Happy birthday to you. Oh, you. Reckon, Greg? Are you going to go swimming with the crocodiles? We can throw you in. That's all right. He's not too keen on that idea. <laughs> Crocodiles just laying just below the water, so that's in the pounce position, I suppose. He'd be ready to go. If we jumped in there, just below the water, and whoompa, he'd be lunch. Yeah, this is a big bugger. He's got his tail hanging down here. Look at that. They're quite an impressive creature, the old crocs. Pretty small of these ones. These are probably, I don't know, maybe a metre and a half long, something like that. Information on the crocs, so the American alligator. The false Yariel, Australian freshy, and the big mean salty. Beyond the darling, how are you today? So found in 18 countries in Southeast Asia, although Northern Australia contains the greatest population for the salties. This is uh, endemic, so basically it's very popular in Northern Australia, Western Australia, Northern Territory and Queensland. So tidal rivers, creeks and freshwater billabongs. Whereas the false gharial, I've never heard of that one before, found in three countries, in Indonesia, Malaysia and South Thailand. And the American alligator, found in 10 states in southeastern US, with the largest populations in Louisiana and Florida, inhabits freshwater pools, streams and swamps. That's why they show all the swamp people in that. Now that's the crocodile I was just videoing before and taking photos of, that's the top of him. He's just chilling. Now we can see him in this water, but in the dirty water that he lives in normally, he is the absolute best ambush predator. So this one being fed, just a little bit of meat. Looks hardly worth it, to be honest. A little dribble of meat for such a big croc. He's probably looking at the person going breakfast. So this lady here is the one feeding him. I think he'd rather eat her than that little morsel of meat. He's giving the little croc a pat. How you doing, <laughs> Rebecca, you're such a brute. You're scared, you're happy to touch snails and spiders and everything else, but crocodiles. Look at what a wussy girly blouse she is. Uh, We've also got a bearded dragon over here. There's Paul, he's giving it a pat. And we got a bearded dragon here. Carol likes that bearded dragon. Give it a kiss, Carol. What is it called? Is it lizard or? It's a bearded dragon. It's a type. So now she's not scared of the uh, bearded dragon. If he's if he's going to be eating later, it's for sure. Sue, Sue, give it a pat. The males will grow as they die. Now we've heard about a hundred years ago. Here's Mark, he's going to give the croc a bit of a pat as well. Not his face, uh, Mark, that would be bad. What's been the best part of your holiday here? Oh, I went out yesterday, I went out on... Went on the boat, didn't we? Yeah, went on the boat. Did you enjoy the sunset on the cruise? Yeah. And what else did you enjoy? We went to that yard place. Which one, the wetlands or the jumping crocodile cruise? Crocodile cruise. The crocodile cruise. Yeah, now, Paul, ever since we got here, how many days until we go home? We got day and Monday. Yep. And tomorrow will be one more day. That's right. Day, yeah. 
And then we're on the big bird home, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Paul's been telling us every day how many days till we go home. Yeah, two days. Even the first day is telling us how many days we're going to go home. Yeah, two so days. Always be focused on what's happening. Hey, you got two days today. Here's the gang, we're heading over towards the aquarium to the fish feeding. And we're just going past these big crocs down here. That's uh, this one didn't have the cage of death. The one next to it had the cage of death. So there are the steps of the cage of death. And then that thing on the chain just in front of me, that's the cage of death. He's a fish feeding man. Here's one of the big crops with his mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> big boy, that one. In this little hood. And I'll make a wing. Hey, hello. And we've got crocodiles all around us. There's a uh, little freshie going for a bit of a wander. Well, he's dropped down now. So we've got little crocs all around. His tail just there. He's doing a bit of a move and a shake. So when they get too warm, they're going to duck into that water. Like the one just out the back we just done. There's one sitting on a little vent there, it looks like, over the other side. So this is what I just had my head in this thing here, Mark. Help. Carol's helping Mark. Are you on the darling, you do it? There's all these little uh, freshwater crocodiles in there. Head bopping up here. There's Don, he's got his red hat on. Hat on, I can see him over there. He's in the one I was in. There's the owner, she's gone in as well. So this croc's name is Bert. He's a famous movie star. He was in Crocodile Dundee. The movie, and uh, he came from one of the original crocodile farms. Now, where is Big Bird? There he is, he's just lurking under the water. There, now we're coming to the reptile enclosure. We've got lots of different lizards. This is the Centralian tree dragon. This one in here is the splendid tree, dra oh, splendid dragon. Even though I can't see where it is, hiding somewhere. One of the world's most venomous snakes, it's the inland or western taipan. So don't put your hand in that cage, that would be bad. We've got turtles and lizards in here. This is a yellow-faced turtle and the Mitchell's water going. These are yellow-throated or they're called white goannas. Jumping on top of each other, trying to break free. So we keep saying hello to the different lizards and snakes. Do you think they're cute, Sue? They are. Yeah, they're like that. <laughs> they are actually. Yeah, a little baby one there climbing face. over the rocks. Little face. Very cute. This lady's feeding through the hole in the uh, door. They just jump and go. Whoop. Oh, there you go. Yeah. It's quite clever. Just uh, the bugs alive. Yeah. She just puts them in with a pair of tweezers. They go. Whoop. Take it. That's very clever. That's cool. Oh. Here we go. Gone again. There you go. That's how to feed a lizard. Oh, 
you see the rat's head hanging out right there? His mouth is free. It might look pretty impressive what lactose just did there, but uh, if that was the wild, you'd have that rat chewing into him right now. So that's why I said we don't give him live meals. In the wild, snakes will generally bite him in the head, or they'll strike and bite the animal's head if that rat's mouth is inside the snake's mouth. The snake can't get bitten. There's Ayanna, she's in the, the crop tank. Are they going to eat you or what? <coughs> There's Don, he's right up near the crocodiles. So is Chris. It's not Look how casual they are. Yeah. 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 They're not in this water. Right, Ayanna, darling. So you've lived to tell the tale of the crocodile swim. Same with you, Don. Yeah. And where's the other crocodile wrangler, Chris? He's at the back there. So we've all lived the experience. Uh, we're off to Middle Beach Markets tonight, which would be good. Yep. Paul, are you looking forward to doing some shopping at the markets? Yep. Oh, not much. I've got plenty of stuff. You've got plenty of stuff? Okay, no. We'll do some shopping anyway, <laughs> even though Paul might have plenty of stuff. So a couple of victims heading down into the uh, crop infested killer waters. I don't know if it's that bad, really, because they're in that big cage. Box over the other side of the enclosure, and the victims are going down now. This is crocodile feeding. Ready in front of his brothers, the Aboriginals. They're actually, uh, it looks like they're killing a crocodile, but we're not allowed to do that these days. Crocodile uh, skeletons, or the head skeletons. There's a Filipino crocodile, a slender snouted crocodile, an American crocodile. You see this one here, this is a little uh, broad snouted cane. And this is one of the Nile crocodiles, so not as big as ours. But still a reasonable size, I wouldn't want to be going and getting it a kiss too often. <coughs> and then what do you got here? We've got um, a Chinese alligator. I didn't know China had them, there you go. Australian freshwater crocodile, so you see that its snout is quite long and pointed. And that one, that's a different one. And this one here is an Indian, an Indian, an Indian chaniel. So I'm assuming that's some sort of crocodile as well. Funky looking nose on that one. This is a dwarf caiman crocodile. It's only a little one, but I still wouldn't like to put my hand in his mouth. A good old mugger crocodile. So this is our night for the Mindle Beach Markets. All the gang are waiting at the back of the van here, and then we're all going to burst onto the scene with great gusto. <laughs> you pumped? You excited? You on that, darling? You okay? Hey, Paul, you looking forward to the markets? Yeah. Good on you. Here that. comes Fred the Whip Cracker. All right, Freddie, go again. That's it, good job. He's nearly going to knock himself over when he whips. Get here, back. Back. What you doing That's it. Back. Here's Rebecca. Like a soldier marching along. The stock wound from way back. No, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Hands up. Like a helicopter. Other way. Other way. Put your way. You gotta come forward. So you gotta come forward. Watch this hand. Forward. Jesus. No, don't walk forward. Stand back there, Sam. Otherwise you'll whip us. Might be the first time we get here. I spin it the other way. So this is how many cars are here. There's oodles of them. There's people everywhere. They come out of the woodwork. The old Mindle Beach markets. So uh, we've come to an Islamic um, service here. And they're actually uh, 
actually giving us a feed here, which is very good. They've got all their shoes over there, just so they don't make it dirty, out of respect. Come and join us, Peter. Yep. Come and join us. It's one of Rebecca's mates from Melbourne. Everyone starts their prayers here. So they eat. Can't eat until sunset. So we're going to tour through the mosque. We're going to take our shoes off. <laughs> Everyone's getting their shoes off now. Go on, Greg, come on over. Sue and Carol are getting their shoes off. You can leave your socks on apparently, but you're going to take your shoes off. So before you pray, there's a special way you've got to clean yourselves up. Yeah. Sam looks like she's about to jump in there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, don't take exactly. So this is the men's prayer area. Yeah. So we just if if so we don't we pray inside there usually. And if there are lots of people, then we pray here as well. Okay. So let's go in the actual. Prayer area. So the Darwin Mosque. We're inside. Out of respect to God. So when we do to make it comfortable for the worshippers, we usually have a carpet together. Yeah. Um, so forward on the head's just a respect to God. It's it's a prescribed manner of prayer. We'll, yeah, we'll demonstrate that as well. Just give you an orientation. Before yep. we do that, um, so we've got specific prayers that he's talking through now. Come on, understand, you can either say them verbally and be loud, or you can say them quietly. No, no. You can, you can pray as much as you like, can't you? Five times is the minimum. Yeah. minimum. And that's the compulsive effect. Magic. And you can pray for your More than that, you're much more religious. So while we've been at the Crocosaurus Cave, these guys have been sitting here bludging and hiding. Look at them. Easy life. So, like I said, can you yell at them or something? Make them do something. I don't know. We're not silly. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a cockatoo sitting on top of the sprinkler having a drink. So we're just heading into Kakadu now. We've done the drive. We're just to, we're actually in Kakadu, but we're going to go to the Bawali Information Centre now. Into one of the galleries. This is the, the local Gunjahamni. I think that says Seasons Calendar just there. So we're going to wander in here now. This is a rammed earth building, so it means that it's had formwork up the sides. They pour dirt in the top and they ram it tight. It's actually very, very um, insulated and uh, energy efficient. These two ladies here from Arnhem Land, they're uh, going to weave a basket or two. The magic. This is dying the pan Dennis plants. So how, so how do you get the colour? So what we did for the yellow colour, we drove them on, found yep. a yellow bush, so yellow leaves, and then it's got yellow roots, and then... Um, we ground that yellow rooter, or normal ground that Your yellow rooter. Right and then brown. mix, yeah, like ground it. So ground the, the yellow root and whip it in there. and Popped yeah. it in some boiling water, popped the pandanus strips in there. Mm. And now we just have to wait. The magic of the barbecue, Paul, the magic of the barbecue. <laughs> Is Paul just getting the low down? What do you reckon, Paul? Is it good? Yeah, good dad. Oh, oh, yeah, it's a billy. Yeah, they've been in a lot of fires. You can feel that. Yeah. There's Greg, he's having a chat to everyone. Anyone, anyone he sees he has a chat to. The rest of the gang are just lurking about. I become Mark's eyes and ears, so I'm filling him in all the goss. Old Billy boy's just chilling there. So some of these take weeks to weave, others are just days. So you're stripping the pandanus down, then you tie it in a knot, and then you cook it while you dye it. And then you weave your magic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is magic. So we're now at the Ubia Rock Art site. So we're going to have a wander up there, have a look at the uh, Aboriginal rock art. It should be good. And then uh, we head back. So here's some of the Ubia rock art. So these paintings are like stick figures. Uh, uh, they're about 5,000 years old. So we were just saying, oh, how do they get up there? Because I reckon that's about three metres off the ground. So they would have had to do something. And to protect them, like Chris just pointed out, they've got a camera strapped to the tree here. So that's a very good idea. Obviously, they do get some vandals around this area, which is a shame. So in each of these little areas, they have uh, a little scribe here, or a little piece of information, so you can read that out and learn a little all about the rock art. That's how I cheated just before. Uh, but it's very, very interesting stuff to learn about.
So this is the troop that's done the walk. Freddie's back at the car and Sue's back in Darwin. So have you had a good day at Kakadu? Yep. Yes. Good to hear. And I haven't taken a lot of movies or shots, but I've been doing a lot of talking now. I'm going to lose my voice, I think. So this is the gang here. This is I just want them to be behind some of that rock art. So this rock art, they, uh, the rock art is determined in its age by basically uh, the other Aboriginals and time frames around the world. So I suppose the time of creation. Here's a gang in front of the rock art. So Greg, how is it? Is it good? Greg's been chatting to everyone the whole holiday, hasn't he? Don's been chilling, been out with the boys. And all good. Paul, how is it? Paul, it's been good? Good to hear. What about you, Chris? What about you, Mark? Good to hear. Big Bad Bill, what do you reckon? And Sue. You've got to say, yes, it was wonderful, Peter, because Margaret will check up on me. <laughs> Didn't we get to do this at the start. We're doing it now. This is the entry to Kakadu. So we're on our way back up to Darwin, but uh, we're going to get a group shot here. This is our last night in Darwin. We're actually at uh, Stokes Hill Wharf again. And uh, just watching the sunset. Here all the gang are hooking into their fish and chips out on the wharf. Our final dinner together. We're filling their bellies full of food. There, yeah, the sun's setting over the harbour now. It's uh, what time is it? It's quarter to seven, six forty-six. Sun's just setting slowly over the harbour. It's a beautiful sight. Water is flat as a tack. It's magnificent. Over here we have some ships and uh, private as well as commercial vessels. Weather is still about 30 degrees, so it's just beautiful up here, absolutely fantastic. So it's very customary that we do a bit of an interview with you after the holiday. What do you reckon of the holiday? That's reasonably good. Reasonably good, good to hear. And Mark, what are your thoughts around the holiday? I would say a plus 10. Plus 10? For everything. What was the best part? I know Kakadu was a bit of a highlight for you. Oh, it was, absolutely. Tick that off the bucket list. Yep. We got Don. Swim, swim with Crocs. Swim with the Crocs. Yeah, yeah it was good fun actually, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. You're not darling. <laughs> what do you think, darling? What's yeah. your favourite bit besides meeting me, silly Billy? <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> Franny, what did you enjoy? I, I like everything. Uh, equal girls. The girls? Yeah, uh, you got my equal. Oh, the Aboriginal ladies yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Yes, they were very yeah. the basket weavers. And darling, yeah, I said you, darling, and um, I, I, I will come back to Melbourne, and uh, I see you. Um, I saw it for girls, and um, yeah, I'm an NITV. Yep, sounds good. Thanks, Freddie. Did you have a good holiday? Yeah. What was your favourite bit? Do you think? Uh, you don't know? No. Did you enjoy Kakadu yesterday? Yeah. Or the? Uh, what about your dinner? Looking overlooking the sunset. Was that nice? Yeah. Good to hear. And the Mindle Beach Markets? Yeah. Good on you, mate. Fred's got some more to say. Fill us in, Fred. Yes, and um, I've got new um, didgeridoo. A new didgeridoo, so we expect super music next time you come away, Fred. Yeah, I, yeah, I did too. Good on you. Amazing, Paul. I had the now, how many I'll... days till we go home, Paul? Today. Today, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Paul's been counting the days even since the time we left home. How was your holiday though? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I enjoyed it. We were on the boat. We looked at the walls all the day. The sunset and, and everything? The, and the wall. And the wharf? Wall. Oh, oh, the wars. Yeah, we saw that. Yes, we did, yes. You we enjoyed that? And we went to see the crocodile. The crocodiles? Yeah. We, you didn't even get eaten by one. <laughs> so that was a good thing. <laughs> There's Sam, she's being a bit shy and coy, so she doesn't want to have a chat to the camera. Sue, she's very shy towards the camera. Did you enjoy your holiday, yes. Sue? <laughs> what would you like to say about it? I enjoyed it. Oh, good. <laughs> did you have a good holiday? I did, especially since I flew business class. Oh, you yuppie. Peter. Yeah, I got the flight too, so yeah, no, that was good. <laughs> did you have a good holiday? Yeah. What did you like the most? Everything. Everything. I know you chatted to everyone. Yes. You go and chat to everybody around the place, wouldn't you? Good to, good to hear, Greg. We'll see you next time. So, Sue, just wondering, do you like bugs? Um... <laughs>
I don't know about those bugs. They look pretty scary. What about a couple of maggots? No way. Bet you'd like to eat that big crab though. No, I wouldn't. Oh, the big crab, yes, I would. I nice. think you could probably crack the shells yeah. and there'd be nice moist meat Yum inside. Yeah. Hey, Yana. Do you love your holidays and swimming in Darwin? Yeah, my favourite is Peter Funny. <laughs> he goes, Yana, 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 and I'll swim off. So up in the air now, it's farewell to Darwin. It's been a great holiday.